infinitely woman. J'adore. The new eau de parfum infinitesime. Dior. At Macy's, the fragrance destination. Happening now. COVID-19 cases are on the rise, but area school districts aren't changing anything. Why they are not rolling back in-person learning. 14 firings and suspensions, a major shakeup at Fort Hood following an investigation into the death of Army soldier Vanessa Guillen and the lasting impact this will have in the ranks of the military. Rather spring-like out there today, but we're still tracking a cold front that's going to hit us later this week. We'll talk about that and a space station flyover later this evening. Coming right up. A year to the day after her son was gunned down at the rim, a converse mother's frustrations are only growing. We'll tell you what she says police are not doing. Heard about the secret sister gift exchange? Coming up, a warning. Plus, as you're online shopping, what you should know about those phone calls that seem to be from Amazon and Apple. The News at 5 starts right now. And first at five, bars must close down. That's what Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf is ordering as of Thursday night. The new executive order requires all bars and similar establishments that hold a Texas Alcohol and Beverage Commission permit and are not defined as a restaurant to close until further notice. The order issued as the number of COVID-19 cases in Bear County just continues to grow. We have more to cover on the pandemic coming up, but first. A mother who lost her son is convinced that San Antonio police homicide detectives are not doing enough. One year after Savan Kyle was killed, his mother says she's taking matters into her own hands. And Kyle was shot and killed in broad daylight at the Rim Shopping Center exactly one year ago today. His mother tells our Devin Clark she has hired her own private investigator to dig up clues to help in this case. Yet her son's killer has yet to be charged. I went in an uproar. I had kids here. I was screaming. Latanya Kyle recalls the horrifying moment exactly one year ago when a normal day at her Converse hair salon took a tragic turn for the worse. And when they called, it was like, pick up the phone. They shot Vaughn. Her son, Savon Kyle, an up and coming rapper known locally as MG Vaughn, was killed after being shot multiple times at the Rim Shopping Center. It was broad daylight. Kyle's then eight year old son also in the vehicle, though unharmed. Since the day Latanya lost her firstborn and only son, her frustrations have only grown. They don't want to work with us. That claim is against San Antonio police homicide detectives, who she says are not following up on leads she's presented to them in order to solve the murder. I hired a private investigator, so they're Therefore, I know <laughs> I know what is what and what is not what. While SAPD wouldn't respond to questions about alleged evidence LaTanya provided to us, she tells us she feels the case is being overlooked on purpose because her son had beat a capital murder charge, which contributed to his rap fame. A week prior to Vaughn's death, I told him if something was ever to happen to you, it would be so hard because I know they're not going to do nothing in regards to this. Why? Because you made the SAP department, SAPD department look foolishness when you went viral. We reached out to the detective working the case. He said he could not provide any information, but assured us that he is actively investigating the murder. In the meantime, if you have any information on Savon Kyle's murder, AKA MG Vaughn, you're asked to give homicide detectives a call at 207-7635. Devin Clark, KSAT 12 News. 22-year-old man now behind bars in Hayes County after he was caught driving a Jeep believed to be stolen from San Antonio. Jacob Anthony Fuentes arrested in San Marcos yesterday morning, accused of driving recklessly on I-35, reaching speeds of 100 miles an hour and refusing to pull over for a traffic stop. San Marcos police say Fuentes led officers on a short chase through several apartment complexes. But he ended up ditching the Jeep while it was still rolling, leaving it to crash into a parked vehicle. No one was hurt. Fuentes arrested on several charges a short time later. A 27 year old man accused of robbing a pizza hut using a paintbrush disguised as a weapon now facing charges. This happened last night at the Pizza Hut on Roosevelt Avenue near Mission San Jose. Investigators say Jacob Matthew Garza went into the restaurant, pulled an object from his waistband and demanded cash. An employee believed that object was a gun and complied. Garza got away with some cash. He didn't get very far, though. Officers caught up with him just three blocks away. 
As COVID cases and positivity rates rise in San Antonio, some of the biggest San Antonio school districts are staying the course this afternoon. Metro Health puts the school risk level at high, which includes a recommendation against in-person instruction. But some districts tell our Garrett Berger they do not plan to roll back. For Northside ISD, it continues to be school as usual. Well, as usual for the pandemic. Right now, our intent is not to change our plans. We are not looking at any plan that would have us in an all virtual model. The district had previously put a hold to bringing any more students to campus. And those who wanted to return in January are waiting to hear when they'll be allowed to come in. But those already there can stay. Balance the need to keep students and staff safe with the need to address those instructional needs, the emotional needs, the nutritional needs of our students. And districts appear to be holding the view that the pandemic holds more danger outside of school walls. San Antonio ISD's superintendent told staff that the district's testing programs show a much lower positivity rate than the community as a whole, just 1%. The Northeast ISD says it hasn't seen much transmission on campus. We're staying open because our data shows there's no spread. We're staying open because our safety protocols are effective. In any case, districts don't have total power to close it all down. Texas Education Agency guidance allows schools to temporarily switch to remote learning only for things like an outbreak on campus. But proactively switching to remote only could affect state funding if they don't make up the time later in the year. But I will tell you that the, the biggest a uh, factor in any decision we make is not going to be the, the financials. It's going to be the safety of students and staff. And no matter the local guidance, it's the district's view of that safety that will count. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. In politics today, we saw dueling coronavirus-related events from both the president and the president-elect. In Wilmington, Delaware, Joe Biden officially rolled out the senior members of his health team. Meantime, the Trump administration explained the task of rolling out the vaccines to the masses down to the last detail. Biden named California Attorney General and former Congressman Javier Becerra as his lead pick of the Department of Health and Human Services. Meanwhile, President Trump signed an executive order prioritizing vaccine access to all Americans before the U.S. helps other nations. On Thursday, the Food and Drug Administration's Vaccine Advisory Committee will discuss granting an emergency use authorization for the first of the COVID-19 vaccines to hit the market. If approved, these vaccines could arrive as early as next week, and University Health says it has the framework in place to roll them out. We could uh, expect to receive shipment of vaccines uh, in Bear County as early as the 16th of December. University Health's Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Brian Alsip, says Bear County is expected to receive about 28,000 vaccines in this first round of distribution. So all of those administering the vaccine have priority tiers as to who will get it first. So within University Health, we've got a lot of healthcare workers uh, and we're expected to receive around 5,800 doses. Now that will cover a significant uh, portion of our staff and probably uh, most of what we would consider the first tier, which are those that have direct face-to-face -face contact with COVID-positive patients. Alsop says the key is making sure to keep track of those who get the vaccine, since they'll need to get a second one in approximately four weeks. However, they will not be saving half of what they get now for then. There are specific instructions from both the state, uh, the federal government, and the manufacturers that you are to use all of uh, that you're uh, administered in that first round and that essentially they will be allotting vaccines for the second dose based on the usage of the first dose. And as far as how soon it will be available to the general public, also said it's too early to say. It probably will be sometime in the spring that we'll start to see uh, a greater availability, both uh, more volumes of these two vaccines that are fairly early out of the gate uh, as well as uh, additional anticipate authorizations of the other vaccines also says as far as University Health goes, staff there will distribute doses like they did the flu vaccine. He also wants people to know the vaccine does not replace wearing masks and social distancing, but is another tool in the fight against COVID-19. And speaking of COVID-19's vaccine, we want to know what questions you have on the topic. That's why this Thursday, December 10th, ECS Romero is hosting a COVID-19 vaccine town hall and live stream discussion with local health experts. It starts at 7 o'clock. You can watch on KSAT.com or on the KSAT TV app found on your streaming device. And right now you can submit your questions on our website. Just go to KSAT.com 
and look for the story on the home page. Now to the latest on all the controversy at Fort Hood, an investigation into patterns of sexual assaults as well as harassment at the Army base in Killeen, now resulting in 14 firings and suspensions. As Romina Puga explains, this review came in the wake of the alleged murder of Specialist Vanessa Guillen and could spark a change in culture. A dramatic purge to correct a command culture at Fort Hood Army Post was announced today after an investigation following the death of Specialist Vanessa Guillen. Fourteen senior Army leaders, including a two-star general, were fired or suspended. After a review of conditions at Fort Hood, including Guillen's alleged murder and a series of sexual assaults, sexual harassment and suicides. I have determined the issues at Fort Hood are directly related to leadership failures. Leaders drive culture and are responsible for everything the unit does. Army Secretary Ryan McCarthy said five civilians took part in the extensive review. The murder of Specialist Vanessa Guillen shocked our conscience and brought attention to deeper problems. It was back in late April when 20-year-old Guillen was reported missing. It was another two months before her remains were found. Officials say she'd been murdered. Her family has claimed she was sexually harassed at Fort Hood, but didn't report it to her superiors because she feared retaliation. The Army has said there was no evidence supporting the claim. The suspect in her death, Specialist Aaron Robinson, died by suicide in the summer as police were attempting to take him into custody. This report, without a doubt, will cause the Army to change our culture. The Army Secretary also announced the creation of the People First Task Force that will carry out the committee's findings. He says these changes will impact the entire Army, of more than one million soldiers and their families. Romina Puga, ABC News, Los Angeles. The United States Supreme Court rejecting a final effort by Republicans to reverse Pennsylvania's certification of President-elect Joe Biden's victory. Republicans argued the state's vote-by-mail law was unconstitutional because it required a constitutional amendment to authorize. But the high court has refused to call into question Pennsylvania's certification process. The state's electors are scheduled to meet. December 14th to cast their votes. And despite today's rejection by the U.S. Supreme Court, Texas State Attorney General Ken Paxton filing a lawsuit against four states over their 2020 general election results. Paxton is suing the states of Georgia, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin, claiming officials relaxed ballot integrity protection laws to skew election results in each of those states. He's asking the U.S. Supreme Court to block those states from voting in the Electoral College. However, claims of voter fraud have been rejected by federal judges, voting experts and election officials in each of those states. This year, holiday shopping might be a little less in store and a little more online. And while you're browsing and buying the perfect gifts, you might unknowingly be making yourself the perfect target for scammers. What to look out for next. This essay salute holiday greeting is brought to you by Blue Ribbon Auto Collision Center. Hi, my name is Danielle Auburn. My daddy worked for Blue Ribbon Auto Collision. I want to thank the military and all of the people who help us. I just want to say Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. And new at five, it's the season of giving and unfortunately taking. As you're shopping online, scammers are using the names of two big companies to try to rip you off. 12 on your side's Marilyn Mortz on three holiday schemes, including one called the Secret Sister Gift Exchange. Order something through Amazon? Scammers are counting on it. As we're shopping online more than ever, scammers are seizing the moment. Listen to this timely robocall. An unauthorized purchase of an iPhone XR 64 gigabytes for $749 is being ordered from your Amazon account. It's not Amazon. The FTC says it's an imposter trying to get your account or credit card number. Holiday shopping on an Apple device? Cons are banking on that, too. The FTC says if you get this call about suspicious activity, be suspicious. Your iCloud account has been breached. Before using any Apple device, please contact Apple Support Advisor. Press 1 to 
connect with Apple Support Advisor. Do not press 1. Do not call the number they provide. Imposter scams like that are rampant. The FTC says last year people lost more than $600 million because they believed those fake calls. Now another holiday heads up, the Secret Sister Gift Exchange. It starts with an invitation on social media. You can receive up to 36 gifts. All you buy is one. You provide your info and that of a few friends and pass it along. Sounds fun, but the Better Business Bureau warns it's an illegal pyramid scheme. We don't want people to be a Grinch. We just want you to know that uh, it could turn into something very sour very quickly when you're sending gifts to people you really don't know that are part of this list. It's nice to give, but the BBB says this invitation is one to decline. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Live look outside, we're getting ready. I don't see any Christmas lights yet. Really? Yeah, not in this shot. Well, of course yeah. not in this shot, but they're yeah. out there. I know. I think, I think a lot of people maybe are going all out with the lights yes, because there's, you know, we're at home, we're looking for things to yeah. do. And with weather like distracts this. Distracts from pandemic. Yeah, yeah we could all use a boost and I noticed the lights were definitely out a couple weeks earlier than usual in many areas. And we do have ideal viewing for Christmas lights this evening again, but also a brief flyover of the International Space Station. We have a flyover tonight. It's going to be a brief one, but set your alarm for 7, 10 p.m. That's when it starts. It's only going to last three minutes. Look to the northwesterly sky. It's going to appear to the northwest and disappear to the south southwest. So 7, 10 p.m. It looks like a really bright star just quickly moving through the sky. That's what it looks like. All right, so get the kids out there 7, 10 p.m. That's before bedtime. You'll be good to go. All right, take a look at temperatures across the state. It was cool this morning. We even dipped briefly below the hill country or below freezing in the hill country. But by the afternoon, it was almost spring like. And right now we're looking at readings 60s in North Texas and West Texas and 70s elsewhere. We even uh, did hit 80 degrees across parts of South Texas today. Carrizo Springs 75 now. 80 currently in New Braunfels, 75 Hondo and Beeville at 74. So tomorrow morning, it's going to be another one of those days where you may want long sleeves or a light jacket just for a few hours in the morning because by the afternoon it's going to be spring like. We'll be down below freezing in parts of the hill country at sunrise tomorrow, near 40 elsewhere, but then we quickly warm up and we see temperatures make it, I think, into the low 80s for most of South Texas, right around that 80 degree mark. So Stone Oak about 80, Lake Hills, Myco area 79, Seguin 81 tomorrow afternoon, Elmendorf as warm as 82 and Lavernia 81. So yeah, maybe that light jacket early, but otherwise you can shed the jacket by about 10, 11 a.m. No problem. It's one of those days where if you work outdoors, you really have to plan ahead for it. So Wednesday is going to be the warmest day, lower 80s, and then you see those temperatures start to fall off, but really drastically drop as we get into this weekend. Highs in the 60s on Saturday and then closer to 60 for Sunday and Monday. We still are expecting a cold front and a northerly wind to drop our temperatures back to average for this weekend and maybe even cooler than average. Dry air still in place. Dew points 20s, some locations in the 30s, even along the Gulf coastline where the vast majority of the year is spent muggy. They've got a nice break from the humidity still. Corpus Christi a dew point of 37. That's a relief for them. By Friday morning, Thursday night, Friday morning, we'll have a brief increase in the humidity. And the significance for that isn't just that you'll notice a little mugginess Friday morning, but I think it's going to lead to areas of fog and drizzle to start the day Friday. And we even have a chance of a few showers. Quiet weather across the nation, but we do have this disturbance, this upper level swirl over the Pacific Ocean. And this right here is going to be pushing eastward in the days ahead. And as I mentioned, some fog and drizzle Friday morning, but this could help to actually trigger a few isolated showers as well. So overall, a little dampness just for one part of our seven day forecast that we're looking at. I wish I had better news with more rain, but unfortunately that's not the case. Temperatures cooling off quickly this evening. Maybe long sleeves at 7, 10 p.m. for the space station flyover tomorrow near 40 in the morning, lower 80s by the afternoon. And then there's that cold front on Friday with the morning drizzle, a few isolated showers. Then we actually clear out by Friday afternoon. So for football Friday afternoon, I think we'll be just fine and clear now.
Happy to hear that. Yeah, I bet, I bet you are, Greg. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> so the Spurs are in training camp, and we got to meet one of the new Spurs. Yeah, yeah, you know, you can imagine being a rookie coming into the Spurs culture and their program under yeah. head coach Greg Popovich, and Tony Parker would complain and lament that Pop had mellowed over the years. <laughs> what is the advice has the number one draft pick received from the veterans on the team? He will tell us. And Red Rivals adjustments now that his O-line is patched together coming up. As the Spurs continue their training camp, part of the work is getting drafted. Devin Vassell and Trey Jones familiar with the Spurs culture and terminology. With everything delayed due to the COVID-19 pandemic, there hasn't been a lot of time to prepare them for their first professional season and first preseason game this Saturday, especially if you are Vassell, who is the Spurs' first lottery pick since Tim Duncan back in 1997. What advice had the veteran players such as DeMar DeRozan and Rudy Gay been able to give him early on? Don't put too much pressure on yourself. I mean, right now we're in a unique situation. Um, you know, we had a week and a half, or about a week and a half until our first preseason game. Um, so really just come in each day, have fun, um, and just learn and get better each day. All right, with at least four players down with injuries or recovering from off-season surgery, Vassell could see playing time this Saturday against OKC at 6 in the AT&T Center. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. The Dallas Cowboys face the Ravens in Baltimore on their first Tuesday night game tonight. That game having to be pushed all the way back from last Thursday after the Ravens game against the Steelers had to be postponed until last Wednesday due to the COVID outbreak in Baltimore. Keep in mind, the last time the Cowboys played was on Thanksgiving Day when they fell to their rivals, the Washington football team, 41-16, scoring only three points in the second half and just one touchdown the entire game. Part of the problem is the Cowboys lost two offensive linemen on the first series, Cam Irving and Zach Martin. And now the Cowboys have placed Martin on injury reserve, which means he will miss the next two games at least with a calf injury and might be done for the season. Backup quarterback Andy Dalton was asked if he feels he will have to get the ball out of his hands more quickly this week with all the O-line injuries. You trust the guys that they're going to get their job done. And so, um, yeah, I, I think it just comes down to knowing what we're doing, knowing the offense, knowing the, the play design and, and, and making those quick decisions. Now that the interim head coach Romeo Cornell has had a chance to review game film, what is his opinion now on the low snap to Deshaun Watson that resulted in a fumble and cost the Texans their win over the Colts? I think the difference was that it was to his left side instead of to his right side. If it had been to his right side, I think he would have been able to, to handle it. But because it was to his left side, he had to go across his body. Hardest thing for a quarterback in that situation, not just getting the snap and the shotgun formation, but he's eyeing the defense at the same time, so he's expecting the snap in this area. When it comes in low, now you have to find it, and unfortunately couldn't in time. Remember the good old days when if you were in the red zone, you went under center? Always. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just not happening yeah. anymore. <laughs> we'll be right back. Space Station flyover, 7, 10 p.m., only lasts three minutes to get the kids outside. Another warm day tomorrow afternoon in the 80s, cooler by this weekend, and a slight chance of rain Friday morning. We could have a little dampness. Thanks so much, Adam, and thank you for watching the News at 5 with us. World News up next. We'll see you back here at 6.